Cesium is quite a deceptive element, and I'll tell you why. As you know if you've seen my lithium, sodium, potassium, or rubidium videos, um, when you mix alkali metals, which cesium is one, uh, with water, you get a lot of hydrogen gas, which is very explosive if burnt, and whatever that metal's hydroxide is. Sometimes you get enough heat, in most cases you get enough heat, to actually ignite the hydrogen, creating an explosion. The thing that's special about cesium is that it's the most reactive, non-radioactive, alkali metal. It is, in fact, the most electropositive, non-radioactive element in the, on the entire periodic table. Now, this would lead you to think that maybe if you threw cesium into water, you would get the largest explosion per gram of all the alkali metals. This is not true, however. The reason this is not true is that the explosion is actually caused not so much by the heat created by the reaction itself between the alkali metal and the water, but by the burning of the hydrogen gas created from that reaction. Now because the reaction um, is, mole is molecule to molecule, one molecule of cesium or one molecule of any alkali metal to one molecule of water, you're going to actually get less hydrogen per gram from alkali metals that have a larger gram to mole ratio, meaning lower down on the periodic table, having heavier molecules. So actually cesium is going to produce a lot less hydrogen than say sodium. And the, um, you can't have an extremely non-reactive, a relatively extremely non-reactive alkali metals such as lithium because that's not going to create enough heat to ignite the hydrogen gas. So you need one that's going to create enough heat to ignite the hydrogen gas, sodium will do the, do the trick, but that has a small enough, that has enough um, moles per gram, or rather uh, not that many grams per mole, so that it actually creates a fair amount of hydrogen. Now the kind of the perfect a uh, happy medium for this is sodium because it's reactive enough to ignite hydrogen gas it produces if it's thrown in large enough quantities and yet it is um, as high up on the periodic table as you can get having the property that it'll ignite the hydrogen gas and so it produces quite a bit. All this is to say that cesium actually isn't that impressive when thrown into water especially if you factor in the cost which is quite significant over $100 for one gram of cesium. Um, this is to be compared. I got an ounce of sodium for just over $10. Now, you, if you want to see cesium being thrown into water, there are lots of videos of, of that on the web, but I didn't want to spend $100 for a gram of cesium, so I didn't get any. And this is just to put your mind at ease that you're not really missing out on such a huge explosion in this particular video, although you can absolutely go look on the web for other explosions. Beware though, there's a British television show known as Brainiac that when disappointed by the reaction they got from their cesium and rubidium samples decided to enhance them with some dynamite. That is definitely not the actual reaction you'll see from cesium. Alright, enough about cesium being used for, to make explosions, or not really used, being used to make explosions. Let's talk about the what I think is the coolest use for cesium. And this is actually telling time. You could define a second as any as a certain proportion of any other length of time or some natural event. And um, a natural event that you, happens very regularly and will not change throughout time is the duration between oscillations of a certain specific frequency of some electromagnetic radiation, let's say. It could be many other things, but this is one that is constant throughout time and quite precise. 
Now, to be able to really hone down the, the specific frequency you want, you, you want an element that will only absorb one very specific frequency so you know you're getting it right on the mark. Cesium will only absorb in between two hyperfine levels of its own of its ground state, meaning the lowest energy state, um, it'll only absorb one very specific frequency of electromagnetic radiation. So what this means is that if you have some cesium atoms without with l completely no other effects on them, you're going to get a very, very specific frequency. You're, you're going to know you're hitting it on the mark. Then you can measure the oscillations and then uh, use the existing definition of a second to approximate, to, to figure out how many oscillations are in the current definition, move that definition to that, then that number of oscillations, and then you have a new precise uh, definition of a second that will last throughout the ages. So uh, the, the current definition of a second, and I have not memorized this number, it is very large, um, it is 9 billion, 192 million, and then the rest I haven't memorized, oscillations of a certain frequency of electromagnetic radiation, which is absorbed when uh, by the increase from one to the next hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-132 atom, and that is an isotope. So if, if you really want it to be the cesium atoms to have no other gravitational or electromagnetic or whatever influence on them, the best way is to have them in complete free fall. So you have lasers shooting up little clumps of cesium, and then this um, frequency is kind of honed as they are falling, completely uh, devoid of any, any forces acting on them. Um, and this kind of clock, a cesium fountain clock, as it's called, is the, currently the most accurate clock in the world, using the actual definition of a second to measure a second.